thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a daily get together that we have at the Senior Center. And today we're going to get a look at Ars Poetica, the project that involves artists of a couple of types, uh, poets and photographers. And we have many poets of you. Poets and artists. Poets and artists. Artists of any type. Okay, Nancy Rico is piping up to tell me <laughs> that we might have other kinds of artists who are participating uh, besides any medium. poets. Any medium uh, whatsoever. So we have in our, um, we have posted on our website pictures, photographs that are paired with poems uh, this year. And so I wonder if one of you who participated in this uh, might uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how the project worked. Any of you want to volunteer to talk a little bit about how it worked? I know that uh, that we had Sue Highlands giving us a lot of organizational structure, but she's not here to start us off today. So I'm hoping that I'll get a volunteer to talk a little bit about um, how Ars Poetica uh, project worked. Well, it first started over, I guess, eight years ago by Collective Visions Gallery in uh, Bremerton. And um, at first, um, they were not going to have the poems, the submitted poems, juried. But uh, <laughs> my husband, Everett Thompson, and I said they'll get much better um, response and and admiration from poets and other people if they had the poems juried. So each year they have had the poems juried and David Stallings and I have always been on the jury. And it's now in its eighth, I think it's eighth year. Great, and uh, what happens after the poems are juried is that there is a pairing with an artist. Uh, how, are well, those, how are those artists chosen? Well, the artists are are artists who are with each each venue, each gallery. The first year it was just Collective Visions Gallery, and after that, gradually we added Front Street Gallery in Paul's Bow, and then the Paul's Bohemian Coffee House, and then after that, um, Sue Hyland with um, the um, photographers from Bainbridge. I can't think of the name of that group, but anyway. Bainbridge, um, Island, Bainbridge Island Photo Club. And yes, very good. Meet here at the Senior Community Center. Yes, so all the poems are uh, sent out by, now it's by uh, Sharon Swenson, who's in charge of doing all this. And um, all the poems are, are sent out by email and they're available for artists to choose them. And it can be, um, the artist can produce work in any medium whatsoever, sculpture, <laughs> weaving, <laughs> painting, anything. And then so we have, have some, so we have some photographers who are here who chose some poems. Barbara Clark, uh, that, that was Nancy Rico we were hearing from, one of the uh, longtime participants in Ars Poetica. Barbara, I know you took your microphone uh, off mute. Maybe you had a comment to add. Um, not really at the, at the very beginning of, before Nancy started speaking, I was just going to say that what it was like for me as a, a poet to send, um, it was, a uh, we were invited to participate and so sent in some poems, which were then selected. And then the, the photographers decided who they'd like to be paired up with, as Nancy said, and, uh, here we are. We were uh, supposed to, um, this was supposed to have happened at the library in April, but of course the pandemic threw everything off and here we are now. And thank you very much for doing it at the Senior Center. So we're doing it virtually this year because um, we actually have been working with the BI Photo Club, which as I said, meets here when we're meeting here. Uh, and, um, and so we were happy to offer them a little virtual space online. So if you go to the BI Senior Center website, you'll see across the top of navigation. And one of the choices there is galleries and one of the galleries is art. And um, so we have, thanks to our volunteer, Richard Kessler 
and the hard work of Pat Egas, who is on the uh, Photo Club, uh, put together the gallery online. Cindy McGregor is one of the participants. Uh, Cindy, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about your engagement with this? Sure. I wanted to mention that last year at the Senior Center, it wasn't virtual. It was the real deal. I think we had about 800 people come through our uh, 4th of July photo show that we do every year. And one wall was um, devoted to the, the Ars Poetica. And we had a lot of people, you know, taking a break from the other photos and reading those poems. It was really nice. So, of course, we were hoping to do the same thing this year. And thanks to Reed, we kind of are. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of are, exactly. Uh, so I just want everybody on the call to know that, that you it's going to be up through the end of the month uh, on our website. And so it's there's a link on our homepage in addition to that gallery link. And if uh, this sounds interesting to you, check it out and share it with people. Uh, Paul Bryans, I know that you and Amy, I think, work together. Is that right? Well, uh, remotely, yeah. Um, the thing is that we were asked to, to choose a poem we wanted to illustrate. And, and so we just had very indirect communication. Um, I wanted to add, though, that uh, when Sue took uh, over this, the Bainbridge Ranch, it, it did become a photo-only thing. It wasn't, she wasn't trying to shut anybody out, but um, for the Bainbridge right. Ranch, um, it's only photographers have been uh, participating. And uh, they, besides the 4th of July exhibit, there was an opening show at the library where the poets read and commented on their poems and the photographers uh, showed off their prints and commented on those. And um, it was a huge success. It was jammed. People were standing. Uh, no masks, of course, at that time. And, uh, so I, I look forward to Sunday being able to get back in that situation. Uh, so uh, talk about our individual contributions too. Uh, yeah, I was. I, I would love to do that. I, in fact, I was kind of going down that road, uh, thinking that uh, you and Amy might talk a little bit about um, what it's like to have your um, to choose a poem and what it's like to find your poem uh, responded to by another artwork. Well, Amy should go first. She did her work first. So if you, you'll need to unmute. Uh, and then we can hear you. There we go. Okay. Um, so, it. I suppose it. As, you know, I submitted my poem. I didn't meet Paul until now, and then I. But I did receive. Um, is this a photograph, Paul? It almost looks like yeah. a painting. Uh, yeah. No, it's a photograph. It's just amazing. And so when I, I got to see the, the uh, photograph he paired with my um, poem, it was just perfect. It was like opening up a gift box and, you, and I felt like, oh, surprise. And it was wonderful, it was just perfect. And it is beautiful. I don't know what kind of filtering you did or you know I don't know where this is, but it was perfect and it's a beautiful photograph. Okay, well, you want to say anything more about your poem? Oh, uh, well, my poem, uh, Flavor Box, I wrote a little bit, book of poetry um, called Seven Words Repurposed, and I took seven words from a variety of sources. So these words that I chose for this poem were from um, Michael's Craft Store, and they had all these signs that had two word combinations like uh, candy melts. And um, so I used these two word combinations in my poem and composed it like that. It's a prose poem. Uh -huh. and, it, and I guess I could say one more thing. I, I wrote all of my poems for my book at um, Pols, the um, Polsbo Bohemian, the Bohemian Coffee House. Paul Pols Bohemian. Yeah, Pols that's Bohemian. It. Right. Mm -hmm. Bohemian Coffee House. Yeah. Right. Looking out a window just like Paul has. 
Yeah, well, the cars, I immediately thought of this photograph of mine I'd taken seven years ago on a trip in New England, um, in Vermont, and we had stopped at the DeWolf Tavern for lunch. And it's a historic building, very old, because early 19th century, um, very pleasant place. And the one of the things uh, that challenges me as a photographer that I'm particularly interested in is dealing with contrast in dark and brightness. And um, that's always difficult. Uh, one of the things you have to learn when you start getting serious about photography is how to uh, prevent losing detail in either areas that are too bright or areas that are too dark. I didn't have my camera with me at the time. I was using an, an older iPhone, iPhone 5 at the time, and I was astonished that it managed to recover both the details in the clouds and the dark area around it. Now, when I got home and processed this photo, it didn't look like this. In fact, I didn't realize that I'd got the area around the outside of the window. It was just black. Um, so I, using software, kept adjusting it to bring out what detail was hidden there in the original shot. And uh, also, although that candle was not lit, uh, the base that it's on suggests a sort of warm candlelight glow. So I warmed the photo up a little by uh, shifting the color balance a little in the direction of the reds. You have to be careful doing that that you don't turn your clouds pink too. So <laughs> that be done. And um, so that I did actually quite a lot of, of work on this. Now, when I got done with all of that, then I started looking at the sky, the blue sky. And blue sky is, believe it or not, one of the hardest things to deal with in photography. In when you're using something with a small lens and, and a small number of bits per inch, uh, like an older iPhone, you can't get a really smooth, flat color like that. You get little dots, which are called noise. And there was a lot of noise in the blue sky. And I had several tools um, that I used to select one by one the squares which had blue in them and then take select only the blue part and then tamp down the noise. There's still some. And I was very proud of my work finally when I got it all done. So I got it printed all ready to hang in the exhibit because I had never printed it before. This is one I didn't share with a photo club because I felt the noise in the sky was too bad a flaw. Um, so I was really looking forward to Having, we actually have the print hanging in our living room now. Oh. Uh, then the word came, sorry, no real show this year. So <laughs> what you've got is what you see. But it is looking out a window and it's looking at boats with their sails down. So I thought well, that goes pretty well together. And it was just happenstance that those uh, lights were on outside too, which added some real period charm, I felt the whole thing. And then I, as I explained online, I started to look up the history of the DeWolf Tavern, and it turns out it was uh, owned by a family as a distillery who were involved in the slave trade. And uh, so that made me think, oh, maybe not such a neat place after all. But I kept doing research until I found that the former chef here, who was an immigrant from India, has bought the place and turned it into a, a restaurant with an Indian focus. So I thought, well, that's kind of a nice turnaround for something that came out of the slaveholding era. So um, that is fascinating, both of you, fascinating bits of pieces that probably you didn't know about each other's art. Anybody else who is in this show would like to comment about their participation? I'd love to hear from you. Hi, this is Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Um, I just wanted to, to um, say that I really, really liked the poem that, that I chose. Um, it's the one called Rat Traps, and it's by Jeff Winker. Um, and I don't know him or anything, but um, I've seen his Facebook page. Anyway, um, I just, I think it's a, a wonderful poem and I just wanted to say something about that um, because it's got really, really strong sounds when you say it out loud to yourself 
and it's got really good images um, there. And um, yeah, like you can see right now how it says, you know, rat traps and thunder claps. It, it's just a, it's a really good rhythm to it, you know. And um, and it evokes for me a lot of memories because way, 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 way a long time ago, I used to tend bar on the Seattle waterfront. And so I can I can relate to a lot of, of the pictures here. So I just wanted to say that that the the photo that I shared with that is a photo that I took on a bright sunny day in Dublin, Ireland. Um, this is a photo of a woman named Maya. And uh, I wanted to get it a little bit more gritty than a bright sunny day, so I, I turned it to uh, black and white and just let Maya speak out from the page for herself because she's amazing. And um, I think it goes really, really well with some of the images that are conjured by Jeff's poetry. Beautiful. Nice job. Reed, Reed, I, this is Bob. I could pipe up if you want. or That would be great. Okay. Yes, that yeah. would be great. Okay. Um, I chose a, a poem by Barbara Hoonan, who I don't think is on, as best I can tell. I don't actually, like Dorothy said, I don't actually know this poet either, but I think she's from uh, Belfair, further south in the county, and we were going to meet for coffee until COVID kind of put things on hold. Um, but anyway, um, her poem was called Agate Passage, and it's uh, about, you know, uh, kids looking on the beach well, near Agate Passage uh, and, and their mom watching on. And, and so I kind of knew immediately that I wanted to, I had a picture of our granddaughter. We live uh, just south of Paulsbo, just around the corner from Agate Pass, and our granddaughter was visiting us, and it was right, she and I were down on the beach looking for uh, crabs right at sunset, and I just kind of thought that this picture of my granddaughter, who happens to have a birthday today, um, evoked the, the, the feeling of Barbara's poem about, you know, kids exploring and, and enjoying, enjoying the beach. So anyway, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun, and I thought it was uh, you know when I saw this passage, I said, oh, I, I mean when I saw this poem rather, I, I, I had to, knew I had to take this one because I, I had thought immediately of this picture of the of my granddaughter. <laughs> anyway, but it was a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed uh, this is the second year I think I've participated in Ars Poetic, and I found it to be very fun and, and enjoyable. <clears throat> so it sounds like often what is happening is that the uh, the poem immediately or fairly quickly seems to bring to mind some artwork that you may have already done. Um, another artist or ways. writer? It goes both ways, Reed. In this case, yes, I already had a poem. When I saw the poem, I said, oh, I, that, I know that photograph I just recently taken jumped out at me. But I think other times, there are times when you read a poem and say, oh, I'm going to go, go, go try and take a, a photograph or make an artwork to, to represent the poem. So I think it goes both ways, Reed. And you've had that in the past where you've done that? You've been involved in this project before, Bob? This is, oops, sorry, lost my earbuds. Hang on. Sorry, lost my earbuds. Yeah, uh, this is the second, this is only the second year I've done it and stuff, but I know that people, you know, it goes, like say, from talking to other members in the photo club uh, as well, that, it, that I think, you know, Cindy and Paul can probably join in, but I think people do it, do it both ways, I think, Reed. Great. Cindy? Oh, I wanted to talk about the poem that I, uh, adopted because um, I just love it. It's called Sally and it's very, it's a sketch. It's quite short and um, Reed, can, can you pull that up? Yeah, let me just, I have to do a couple of uh, moves to find it before I know exactly where it is and there it is. So, so grandma's gone. One spring day she was someone you could talk to. The next, someone you could talk about, we will. And uh, I loved it because it was spacious and you could fill in your own blanks about grandma. And um, like they say about painters, they never shoot you for what you don't put in a painting. It was, it was um, broad enough that you could bring to it whatever you wanted. 
And so uh, I just, uh, the three things we know about Sally is it was spring, so I changed the kitchen background to spring flowers. And uh, that Sally was even easy to talk to. And here, uh, our Sally has uh, Walt Disney characters on her shirt. So, and in real life, very easy to talk to as well. And um, someone you could talk about because she's got that lust for life. So um, this is, uh, those of you from the Senior Center recognize Mickey. She was actually the, the, the uh, president of the board at the Senior Center for a while. And uh, so anyway, um, what I found that, that I really like about this whole process is that I got to read why some of my fellow photographers chose their poems. And they wrote really thoughtful things. And I found people like um, Jerry Young and Rob Wagner, who I've known for six or eight years through the camera club, I learned things about just reading their thoughtful comments. So I thought that was really fun. Amy uh, comments in the chat that she really enjoyed that you made some changes to the uh, photograph to accommodate the poetry that you were uh, working with, responding to. Anyone else like to share their experience from either side of the, from the writing? Al Gundy, maybe? Well, is Gerald Young here? I don't believe so. He was the uh, photographer. Uh, my poem was Dry yeah. Leaves. Who wants to be a millionaire board game? <laughs> okay. okay. Turn your radio down. <laughs> I can't. We're, getting, we're getting a little report from Ann, <laughs> who uh, who has to live with a with an announcement from time to time at uh, Madison House. So, um, so Al, you were saying something about the. Um, well, Gerald had a wonderful photo, and my my poem was a sort of commemorated the the late uh, the early and late rains of last year. November is supposed to be the wet month, but uh, it was pretty dry. And all the leaves that had come down in October were still dry and floating around. And so um, that was what the poem was about. But the, the, the photograph that he had was a wonderful one. I, I live in an area on, on Hood Canal, which uh, has a lot of tall cedars and a lot of very, very voluminous big leaf maples so every year i have a lot of raking to do so that was the uh, the idea and the picture that he put together the, his photograph was a, a giant maple leaf against a rock wall just wonderful it was almost like it was something that was on my property so i was uh, quite impressed i just wanted to say thank you to him although he's not in attendance well we do record this so perhaps he'll find it later Barbara Clark, any uh, yes. any in reflections? Well, I was I was really delighted um, that Jerry had chosen my poem, um, and what he had to say was so thoughtful, um, and I really appreciated it. And I I just I loved the photo that went with the poem. Uh, my poem was an outgrowth of, I've been participating in the poetry as memoir class through the Senior Center for the, over the past year. And the poem came out of um, something that, uh, an assignment from that um, group. And uh, then when Jerry uh, chose that photograph of, it was, it's of his granddaughter who is similar to the, the writer um, uh, or the speaker in the poem. And I could see the trepidation on her face and yet so much engagement with the world. Um, and he said that, that she is still like um, 
how she, you know, how he experienced her when, when she was, uh, when he took the photograph for, uh, yeah, that's and, a lovely, that yeah, it's a lovely expression that he captures there. It's a combination of, as you say, trepidation and excitement and maybe even a little anticipation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it felt uh, like, a, like a good fit for me. He and I have never met. We um, had talked about it and then, uh, of course, like many other things this year, have it didn't happen. Can you can you reach? Can you show the poem again, please? Could somebody read the poem? I can read it. Okay. Um, dear parents of fill in the blank. As it is time for report cards, I thought I'd add a message to you, as you can see and no doubt already know. Your daughter excels at all things academic, a promising writer. She is kind and thoughtful to her classmates, exhibiting a wisdom beyond her years. I am concerned, however, about how sensitive she is when tears leak from her eyes at perceived criticism and outrages to herself and others. Just the other day, her voice faltered and her eyes filled when the students presented me with an end of the year gift. To survive in this world, she will need to toughen up, grow a thicker skin, not care so much. It is a liability and must be curtailed before it leaves her desiccated, des destined to be blown to the side by larger voices. I, can, I cannot advise on how to manage this impediment something best left to summer when time and caring parents will know what best to do. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Thank um, you. And are there any reactions from those of you? Have I got everybody? Lisa, were you participating? You need to un unmute yourself. If you can figure yes, out how to she do did. that, she's okay. there. You go. Hi. I am. Okay. Rick, I'd like to tell Barbara something. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, uh, Barbara, uh, I have a friend from the photo club who was probably one of the original founders of the club, and she's now in Wyatt House and has some mobility issues. So um, I ran off copies of the poems and the photos and took it to her. And she said it was a treasure. She just loved reading those. But the one that stuck with her was your poem, um, uh, uh, the um, fill in the dear parent of. Uh, and yeah, that really made her day made her weak probably well thank you for sharing that i'm i'm very touched and that's a great thing that you did to include her because it's difficult these days with uh with covid for many people um i'm thinking also of ann who is at uh madison house and with us to get out and do some of these things and i know that the, uh, your friend um probably doesn't really use a computer, so being able to uh, get her set up with a with a printout is great. That's the kind of thing that really makes a difference during this time. Lisa. Okay, so the poem that I wrote. Let me get myself out of that corner. <laughs> um, was called Autumn Equinox, and I don't know if the if the photographer is here today, Dawn Bacchus. No, Dawn, Dawn is not on the call. Okay, so the poem is, reminds me of the time we're having right now. So I don't know if you want me to read it or not, but um, here it is. Go ahead. Okay, autumn equinox, it's fall, 
Leaves turn crimson, gold, rust. The air transforms. Here comes a frigid zephyr, then a warm breeze reminding me of summer's heat. Tan pine needles cover the road. Rain comes one day, again the next. Mornings are cooler. Warm sun surprises in mid-afternoon. South moving sun sets early, left of neighbor's house on long midsummer days. Sun sets to the right of their house in the western sky. Garden flowers flop over from weekends, wind and wet. My mind slows, want to sleep in, do less, hibernate. Mm. Nice. And there is John's photo. Mm -hmm. Very nice pairing. Yeah. So any thoughts that anybody here might have about uh, those of you who are attending who didn't participate about this, uh, this whole concept? I've got a couple more things I'd like to say. Well, go ahead then. That Dawn picture is remarkable. Um, you should know, if you haven't seen her work, that Dawn is mainly a bird photographer. And she does tremendous pictures of eagles and stuff. So landscapes aren't her normal uh, approach. Mm -hmm. But also, the photo club used to have an annual Christmas ceremony where we would give the, uh, the best photographer of the year, the one who got the most points in the judging over the year. And Dawn kept winning it all the time. I don't know if that's the reason that they did away with it, finally. <laughs> she was most years uh, number one. I, I admire her work a great deal. Um, I got to say, I was attracted by the poem about uh, Agate Passage. I'm, not, I'm, I'm known in the wider world outside Bainbridge, mainly for a website called Common Errors in English Usage. Uh, which is a book and a website, and it was a podcast for a while. And I did a whole podcast on the Agate Passage because it amused me that about half the time it's called Agate Passage and half the time it's called Agate Pass. And businesses are called Agate Pass this, that, or the other thing, or they're called Agate Passage. So there's road signs, um, just all kinds of references. And people seem to think they're synonymous. So, you know, technically a passage is a low spot going through the mountains where you can go between into a valley or something and, and get by Svayana. A pass, or that is, a, that's a pass. And a passage is a narrow body of water. Um, but that doesn't seem to make any difference to people around here. So I just thought it was entertaining. <laughs> well, it made, it, it made a difference to Bob, I think. Made a difference to Bob because he got it right. <laughs> I'm just yeah, going with what the I maps say, that. Paul. Pardon? I said I just go with what the maps say. I figure you can blame the English usage on the British guys that were here in the 1700s naming stuff. So <laughs> can't blame them for the Agate Pass Cafe, though. There you That's go. <laughs> Which, <laughs> well, I just think yeah. this is a delightful combination. Yes. Um, uh, it's Karen. Karen, yes, I see you. Hey, Lisa, that that poem, I'm looking out my window, that poem is perfect for today. I mean, it just like nailed everything that's happening today. I mean, the sun just yeah. came out. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, whoa, this is surreal. <laughs> I hear your beautiful poem, and then it's happening in front of me. So mm -hmm. I just want to let you know how much I appreciate that. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> And um, Amy has offered to read her poem. I think we definitely should let her do that. Would you like, I'll bring it up here and take me a minute. Okay, uh, it's the, um, the bicycle one. I had two in there, so it's the bicycle. Okay, let's see if I can. I don't know if you can hear. It goes with the ghost bike. Okay, there there we, there's the ghost bike and there's the bicycle. Yeah. I thought this was good for this um, time of year. I bicycle, this is bicycle on the heels of Halloween. I bicycle past St. Louis Cemetery, 
pedal like a 12 year old past headstones and dogwoods. The dead's bony fingers knuckle through chain link hexagons and click my spokes like baseball cards. Tick, tick, tick. Through the trick of squinting sunshine and point and laugh. Ha ha ha, I'm alive, I'm alive. My feet speak faster. I've taken those woven and worm for granted. As a girl, I picnic on beets and wing a kite over their mounds like hexagonal lozenges. Now flying past a graveyard, my heart circles, swallows, and slips. I near them even while pedaling away. I'm sorry for laughing. More of a sore throat shriek, really. So do penance on the day of the dead, spending time sucking on memories, violet-eyed Elizabeth Taylor, mink-fitted Betty Davis, and Johnny Carson. Judy Garland, who died at 47, a garland of marigolds strung large from her grinning skinny, shoulders so small. How I miss them all, Juno-esque hearts of my youth, who could imagine Elizabeth Taylor's October eyes melting? Maybe I've missed something, a beat beneath the warm soil or in the casket of my chest. A lollipop, trick or treat. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Really? That was mm -hmm. fabulous. <laughs> oh, thank you. And there's the bicycle that um, Robert Wagner did honoring the fallen the fallen traveler, which I thought was just so apropos. So this is, as uh, Nancy said, this has been going on for eight years, and it sounds like there is a difference. Uh, there are there are sort of different activities around the county. Is that how that works? <clears throat> and here on Bainbridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, here on Bainbridge, it's the there's been the photo club doing it. Um, although many poets and artists, or poets anyway, from Bainbridge have participated um, with some of the other venues, the other galleries. There's Collective Visions Gallery in Bremerton. There's um, Front Street Gallery in Paulsbo, and there's um, the Paul's Bohemian Coffee House. Um, so they're basically four different venues and, and where they show the, uh, they display the poem and the artwork. And, uh, in, in the other three venues, uh, the artwork can be in any medium, as I, as I said. So, uh, and then, uh, one Sunday during each year, um, each, each, each venue will have a a, a show, and, and and well, they have a show for a month. But then one Sunday, they had invite all the poets to come and read their poems, and the artists to come and talk about their artworks. It's pretty exciting. So, if somebody is interested in keeping track of this and interested in participating, obviously keep tabs locally on the Bainbridge Island Photo Club, and um, I'm not exactly sure how to keep your eye out for. The announcement that will come of uh, opportunity to offer poems to be juried and considered in um, competition for next year. And well, for the photo club, I'm sure somebody here knows, but um, to enter the competition in general, um, I think anybody could just look up Ars Poetica online and get to that. Great. Well, I want to thank you all for taking the time to walk through this. This has been just wonderful. A beautiful, beautiful uh, walk through your artwork. And I'm grateful to have the opportunity to sort of highlight it in addition to it being on our website. And we look forward to when we can all uh, get back and do these things in person again. But yes, in the meantime. Indeed. Amen.